We are live. Okay. So, happy Easter and welcome to uh, Unity of Love and Understanding's Circle of Love Sunday Gathering. And uh, let's begin with a prayer. So as we turn within in this moment, we touch that secret, sacred place within us that is the Christ, our, our highest self. And just know that it's always there waiting for us to awaken it. And as we do, everything in our life changes. We become in alignment with our true principles or with our true, true inner self. And we allow ourselves to be the thing that God thought of when it thought of us. Perfection. Peaceful, loving, joyful, prosperous, abundant, healthy, whole, and complete. So we know that this is a special day for us to remember all those things and more. So I give thanks for everyone who is in attendance and all those who will hear this on video. And just know that everything in this very moment is unfolding perfectly in each of our lives, individually and collectively. Thank you, Father. And so it is. Amen. Thank you, and uh, happy Easter again. And uh, we're going to, we have a special musical inspiration today. We have Lynn Fuqua. So uh, Tan is going to switch over to Lynn, and she's going to unmute herself, and we're going to be able to see and hear a wonderful performance. Thank you. Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful, Lynn. Thank you. Thank you so much. 
So. So today's reading is from the Metaphysical Bible Dictionary by Charles Fillmore, the co-founder of Unity. Jesus resurrected the body that was crucified. This is forcibly brought out in the scripture account of the crucifixion. He did this by putting into the body the true state of consciousness. Put on the new man that after God hath been created in righteousness and holiness of truth. We can resurrect our body just as Jesus resurrected his. Follow me, he commanded. We can overcome and make our body like the body of Jesus. We must do this. The law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus made me free from the law of sin and death. We resurrect our body by putting a new mind into it, the mind of spirit. Be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Ignorance and sin kill the body. Understanding and righteousness bring it to life. Well, happy Easter again. And um, this is the most sacred week of the Christian religion. And it's a time of renewal. It's a time of new beginnings. You know, it, it's the beginning of spring. And spring, after the long period of winter, bursts forth with new life. What would look to have died now comes and, and begins again. It, it resurrects itself. It's a very symbolic holiday. So many people have thought that it's simply about a person, a, a man named Jesus, having overcome death. This is actually a very personal holiday because it's about you and me. This entire week is really about each one of us. It doesn't matter whether you're Christian or Jew or Muslim or, or Hindi or Buddhist. It doesn't matter what you are. This is very significant for us all because it provides a gateway for all of us to be able to see and feel and to know that we can begin again. That everything that we do, everything, can start over. It doesn't matter the, the problems that you've created, the things that you've done, the errors that you've made. By the crucifixion, we can cross them out. We can start all over again. So this has such significance for all of us. Because there isn't any one of us, myself included, that, that wouldn't like to, to start things over again in certain respects in our life. Wouldn't want to see maybe the mistakes we've made and that we've learned from them and we can change our mind and change everything about it. That's what this holiday symbolizes. It says that whatever has happened in your past, with the snap of a finger, with the changing of a thought, you can begin again. You can bring forth something entirely different and new. That's that opportunity that each and every one of us has. But we don't have it just at this time. We have it all the time. This is simply the symbol for us to be able to see and to feel and to know it in this moment. I, I love this holiday. Because even the pain and the suffering that were recorded during the the betrayal and the judgment of Jesus 
allows each and every one of us to remember that we've probably all gone through that too. We've, we've been betrayed. We've, we've been judged. Maybe rightly, maybe, maybe falsely. But it doesn't matter because as we go through our consciousness, as we sift through our state of mind, we each have an opportunity to change the way we think, to change the words that we say, to change the actions that we result with. We can all begin anew. This is a time for you to remember that everything that you say, everything that you think to begin with, before you even say it, run it through a filter. Run it through a filter of positivity. Is this something positive that I'm about to, and I'm thinking, and that I want to say, and that I want to do? If it's not, stop. Rethink it. Begin it again. You know, I personally believe that we go through this life many, many times. That we literally pick our parents in the specific experience that we want in a particular lifetime for us to be able to learn and to grow. That's our whole point here, is to learn and to grow. And to learn that we don't need to, to get and acquire and accumulate things. That the true essence of why we're here in this form is to contribute, not to take away, not to, to take something for ourselves. It's to give. We are spiritual beings having a human experience. And that human experience allows us to feel and to touch and to have the emotions that we couldn't have as spirit. It allows us to live through the challenges, to wake up, to see each other from a different perspective, the way that God sees us. We can see each other through the eyes of God by seeing that there are no enemies. There's only the, the perfection of God that's within each and every individual. Whether they choose to expose that, to release that, to share that, that's their charge. That's their freedom of choice. That's your freedom of choice, whether you want to. But inside of you and inside of everyone is that sense of perfection. Christianity calls it the Christ, your higher self, the perfection of God that's within you. That's the Christ. But it's not just in Jesus. That Christ is in each and every one of us. But it's to the degree that we decide that we want to express it. It's to the degree that we want to share it with everyone. You know, Jesus said to those who were not willing to share, would you take your light and hide it under a basket? Which means that you're not going to share the warmth and the light. You want to hide it away from others. Why? Well, there's only two states of being. Either you're in love or you're in fear. As Albert Einstein said, two things cannot occupy the same space at the same time. You cannot be in love and in fear at the same time. It's impossible. But you're either in love or you're in fear. Now that takes a lot of different forms. Fear could be the, the hatred and the bigotry that you see floating around right now against people of color, against Asians right now, against all other individuals, anyone who is not like you. 
That's fear expressing itself. Then there's fear of those who are afraid to succeed. They may have stumbled along the way and, and were hurt. And even given the opportunity to be able to succeed, they refuse to take the step again because they're in fear. And then there are those who are afraid of relationship. They may have had a good relationship and are afraid to start another one because they don't think that they could ever have the same thing. Or they've never had a good relationship. And they can't conceive of having a good one now. That's fear. You're either in love or you're in fear. And when you're in love, you begin to see those individuals and those inequities that appear to have happened to you as being learning tools. The, those are the incremental steps of how you and I learn about ourselves so that we can relate to others. That's our purpose in life. That's the reason why we're here, is to, to learn how to, to speak to one another, how to associate with one another, how to love one another. That's why we're here. And if you aren't doing that now, if you're not experiencing that in your life, I have a friend who called me up the other day and says, you know, I have no joy in my life. Every day I get up, I have no joy in my life. And I sat and I listened to him and I, I listened with my open heart and, and I, you know, I, I consciously embraced him and I, I heard him. I also understood that it was his choice. You can have absolutely nothing and be happier than anyone else in this world. And you can have everything and be the saddest person in the world. It's your choice. What do you choose this day? Do you choose to cross out, crucify those things that seem to hurt? Do you choose to let those things go and to grab hold of the things that make you happy? You know, when I was a little kid, I uh, grew up in the South Bronx. And... Uh, my dad was a postal worker. My mom at that time was, was a housewife, which was a pretty tough job. It still is today. But I didn't realize that we were poor because what we had was far more than what money could buy. We had each other. We had fun. We, we had enjoyment with myself, my sister, my mother, my father, our other family friends. They would do little parties and things, and it, it was just wonderful. It wasn't like we had a lot. Everyone came and shared what they had. You know, it wasn't until later on I, I, I was told, you know, you, you were, first of all, you grew up in a really poor neighborhood, and you were really poor. Well, I may have been poor financially, but I wasn't poor emotionally. That's the same with all of us. I look back at that now and I say to myself, thank you, God. Thank you for that learning experience because it, it taught me that things don't provide joy. People provide joy. I crossed out the idea that I had to have everything to be happy. I have another friend who, the man's a multi, multi-millionaire. And he has, a, he has a room in his house 
that he was poor when he was a child. And he has this room. And when you open up the door to the room from, from floor to ceiling are, are brand new boxes unopened of toys. And I, and I said, what, what is all this? And he said, these are all the toys that I wanted and couldn't have as a child. I have them in here now. And he had three, four, five cars. He had, he had this beautiful home. He had a, a multi-million dollar place. I, he had everything. But he wasn't happy. You can't buy your happiness. You can't buy joy. It's either you're allowing it to be expressed through you or you're trying to get and attain it. I find the most joy that I have is when I'm giving, not when I'm taking, not when I'm acquiring, but when I'm giving. That is when I'm truly joyful. Just like what we do here. It's being able to share some insights, share the, the learning experiences that I've had so that other people can learn too. And, and it's so important because it's not just me sharing. You know, the beauty of what we do is when we stop the recording and then everyone else shares their insights that's the most important time to me because I get to learn. I get to learn from you. I get to learn your experiences. I get to ex step into that experience with you. We have John Pearson who, who writes an amazing piece every time. And just listening to that piece has a very different viewpoint than, than what I normally speak about. And I learn from him. Our job in this form is not to get and acquire things. It's to learn and to grow and to share. So this Easter, let it be a symbol for you for change, for crossing out all of those things that have held you back up until this point, that haven't allowed you to feel and express the joy that you really should be feeling. Changing your thoughts, changing the words that come out of your mouth, changing the things that you do so that they are filtered through this positive filter that's simply giving rather than receiving. When you do that, you too will rise up, just as Jesus did. You change by the renewing of your mind. It's a state of consciousness. Just like you can't buy your joy, you can't you do have the ability, however, to cross off anything that is bothering you. I, I, I had some sessions with people, and, I, and I, I tell people this all the time. One of the things that I do in the evening is I like to journal before I go to sleep. And one of the things that I do is before I meditate, to, before I sleep, is I open the journal and I say, I release this. I release being upset with this person. I release being upset with myself. I release anything that is bothering me. I close the book. I close my eyes. I get still for a little while. I just find some, a place of peace within myself. And then when I close my eyes, I sleep like a baby. Because your mind doesn't stop just because you're sleeping. And all the things that you were upset about before will continue to be upsetting. Be ye renewed by the transformation of your mind. 
change your thoughts and you change everything about you. That's the key to this holiday. This is a divine celebration. It's for everyone. If you decide to, you can crucify and cross out those negative things and you can change to your positive true self and rise up just as Jesus did. So let's get still for a moment. Let's know that in this moment, you can be with Jesus and with everyone else in paradise. Heaven and hell are a state of mind. They're not a destination point after you lose your body. In this moment, I choose heaven. In this moment, I release anything that is unlike that. And I embrace the true self of who I am. That the Christ dwells within me. And as I know that truth, I am free. I'm free from all of those things that have held me to this moment in time. I am free. I am open, receptive, awake, and aware. Thank you, Father. And so it is. Amen. Happy Easter. Lynn, you want to unmute and give us a song? I had to say may well be simple but the truth until you give your love there's nothing more that we can do
ever offer you more? Do you know what I mean? Have your eyes really seen? Do you know what I mean? Have your eyes really Beautiful. Thank you so much, Lynn. That was beautiful. So, um, Tana, if you would, uh, would you please put up the uh, donation information and share that? Thank you. Beautiful. Thank you. Well, this is our conscious sharing time. <clears throat> so, you see a couple of ways of uh, making donations. You can go online to our website at unityofloveandunderstanding.org and you make a secure donation there. Or you can uh, mail a check to our office here at uh, Unity of Love and Understanding at 2202 Pico Boulevard, Santa Monica, California. So whatever you're gonna do, whether it's a tithe, gift offering, whatever it is, just put your hand on your heart for a moment. And know that whatever you're giving, you're giving from your heart. The center of the pulse of your, your life force itself. So we bless the gift and we bless the giver. And we just know that everything's unfolding absolutely perfectly for ourselves individually and collectively as a community, as a country, and as the world. Thank you, Father. And so it is. Amen. So we're going to do the uh, uh, prayer of protection right now. And then uh, Tana will spotlight me again and we'll do the uh, uh, closing prayer. And then after that, we'll shut down the, the recording and then we can all share. So Tana, if you would put up the uh, prayer of protection. And let's say this together, okay? The light of God surrounds us. The love of God enfolds us. The power of God protects us. The presence of God washes over us. Wherever we are, God is, and all is well. Amen. Thank you, Tana. So let's, uh, let's close out with a prayer. And... Uh, just know that this is a very symbolic day. Let's not forget that. Let's utilize this in our consciousness to be able to cross out the old things and to embrace the things that we want to rise to. So again, let's get still. Let's know that the Christ that was in the mind of, of Jesus is the same Christ that's within each and every one of us. It's our highest self. It's the transformative power that's deep within us that can do and be anything. So as we accept that, as we, as we embrace that, we allow that power to rise up within us and to be at the forefront of our mind, to be the filter for every thought that we have, to be the filter for the words that come forth in our, our mouth and the actions that we do. to know that the Christ is walking before us and that any time we want to rise up, we can, now and forever. Thank you, Father. And so it is. Amen. So I want to thank everybody. I want to thank Tana for all the work that she does behind the scenes for us. And I also want to thank Lynn for some beautiful some music and song. Thank you so much. And thank you, everyone. Uh, I look forward to us being able to uh, share our, our ideas shortly. All right. We're just going to close out. Thank you. <laughs>